what's going on guys it's omni York, and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i am going to be giving you a ton of tips for beginners in the mobile strategy game rise of kingdoms now if you clicked on this video you probably already know what rise of kingdoms is and you were searching for this specific content however if you are a long-term viewer of my channel or if this video was recommended to you and you clicked on it because you've seen rise of kingdoms ads and you want to know what it's all about rise of kingdoms is a free to play military strategy game available on the google play store and on the apple ios app store now most of the time these videos are made by sponsored creators from the game developers so in this case lilith games has partnered with a ton of different content creators to uh, make videos about rise of kingdoms i am unaffiliated and unsponsored by lilith games whatsoever i've never talked to them they've never reached out to me i merely have been playing this game for 435 consecutive days that's right i have not missed a single day without playing this game in 435 days so what does that mean well i know a ton about this game am i the best on my server not even close but i'm much stronger than a new player i have 40 million power as you can see here which if you just started is probably shocking to you uh, for my server, I'm probably maybe top 100, um, but not even. So that's why I'm making this video because I am, I've been passionate about this game for a very long time. I really enjoy this game. And the second reason that I'm making this video is because I decided the other day to randomly live stream a brand new account. And during that live stream, I was getting tons of people coming into the stream who found my stream because I was the only person live streaming rise of kingdoms at that time. And that's when it dawned on me that <clears throat> this game is played by millions of people in all sorts of countries i mean we're talking united states mexico china russia japan like all countries around the world this game is still gaining tons and tons of new players new attention there's a lot going on with this game it's very active it's very successful and here i was the only person streaming this game now you know that what that told me was there's a lack of content for this game this game is mega popular and there's not that much content now let me preface that by saying there are there are a handful of very good content creators for this game chiskel gaming taught me a ton of what i know shinshi taught me a bunch of what i know legend uh legend roni has taught me a little bit i've only watched his videos a couple times but regardless it made me realize that you know a lot of their videos are from a year ago and if you're just now finding this game which a ton of you are you might be skeptical to even take that recommendation because if you know anything about these types of mobile games you know that they change very very quickly and the information could be outdated now i think a lot of their videos that are older have aged really well i think this game has done a good job at progressing in a very stable way um but there is still a lot of information that has changed over time so with that long introduction out of the way let's jump into the beginner's guide for rise of kingdoms in 2020 now the first thing that i want to talk about the first bullet point on this list is the elephant in the room is this game pay to win and I don't think that that is a fair question right because any free to play game can be pay to win their whole business model surrounds giving players the opportunity to spend money and of course rise of kingdoms is no different yes you can spend a lot of money and i've met players who have spent 10 20 50 a hundred thousand dollars i'm just pausing because that's real on this game now does that mean they're going to have a huge advantage yes they're going to have a massive advantage but but can free to play players or low pay to play players enjoy the game huge yes big big yes is there a ton of opportunity for free to play players to have a meaningful impact on their kingdom yes resounding yes so i think rise of kingdoms and lilith games has done a really great job at finding some sort of balance now 
if you've played this game and you're very familiar with it, you probably have a way more cynical attitude than me when it comes to this whole aspect. However, I there's just so much to do in this game and it's such a community based game that there's just there's so many ways that free to play players can have a big impact on their alliance. Um, and so I don't want anyone to be dissuaded by finding out that yes, there are people who spend thousands of dollars, um, but you're going to be playing alongside a lot of them. It's not like you're always going to be going up against them. So with that being said, you know, yes, you can spend a lot of money on this game and yes, it will make you much stronger, but that doesn't mean that you can't have fun. And that doesn't mean that you can't make a big impact on your kingdom in your alliance and uh, on the game in general. Now with the elephant out of the room, let's move on to the second bullet point I have here and that is should you start over right because I'm about to give you about 10 to 12 more tips and you're probably gonna go through this and you're gonna be like wow I failed to do that wow I messed that up wow I didn't do this should you start over most likely not um, the game develops in a very uh, reasonable pace and in a way where you can fix your mess ups without too much uh, hassle um, there are some exceptions to this where if your game and your kingdom, I'm sorry, if your uh, city is less than, let's say, seven days old and you don't mind restarting, um, I would say, you know, there's probably a good chance that you're going to enjoy the game a lot more if you start the game properly, which I'm going to explain here. But for the most part, if you've been playing this game for over a month and you've made significant progress, I wouldn't say that you have to restart just to do what I do. In this video if you want to that's fine but again there's tons of ways that you can fix any mistakes that you make later down the road without spending money so I wouldn't sweat it too much right all these mistakes that you maybe have made you could probably fix without really too much of a hassle so like I said I started a live stream streaming a brand new account this account is only City Hall level 8 at this point and this is probably similar to what your your town your city looks like if you're a new player um, so the third bullet point I want to talk about is, uh, what kingdom should you pick? What's the best kingdom for rise of kingdoms? Well, if you're a new player, there's a couple things you have to know. One, you can change kingdoms later and there's a couple of exceptions. Some kingdoms are locked. Um, and if you're too strong, you can't just pour it into a brand new kingdom. Uh, and, and whenever I say kingdom, that's equivalent to server, right? If, if you, if you're play, if you change kingdoms, you're really essentially changing servers. So this account is only two days old and it is on one of the newest servers that was available at that time. And that server is uh, 1648. Now this game releases servers, I think two, two or more servers every single day because the game is growing very quickly, even over a year after its official release. So I would recommend starting in the newest kingdom possible for a couple of reasons. One, it will be a level playing field for virtually everybody in the kingdom. Now, the only exception to that is people who are jumper accounts, and that is way more complicated, and that requires way more time investment for your first five days. If you want to know how to get a huge, uh, or I should say a modest leg, uh, modest head start on your competition, look up how to do a jumper account, but it's not something I did. It's not something you have to do. It's not that big of a deal, but I just wanted to mention it because someone's probably going to post in the comments. Yes, you can do a jumper account. Look it up if you want to, but it's not necessary. Um, but again, for the point of this video, start in the newest possible kingdom. And the reason for that is a couple. Well, the first is an event that only happens at the beginning of a kingdom. This event is fittingly called Rise of Kingdoms. This event will give new players tons of really good uh, perks and really good items just for playing at the beginning of a kingdom's life you're getting two gold keys for logging in three gold keys for logging in you're getting speed ups training speed ups research speed ups all sorts of free resources and all these other perks um and this is all free and the only way to participate in this event is by joining a kingdom at the beginning of its life so by joining an older kingdom um you're losing out on the opportunity to get all this free stuff so you might as well get this free stuff if you're free to play this is the way to go why would you not want free stuff especially stuff that's all very relevant and also it, you know it's very useful to you beyond that about halfway through this five-day event 
um the lohar trial is going to start and lohar is a commander that is very useful um for leveling up your other commanders now lohar is not a timed exclusive event lohar will come around i believe once every maybe three to four weeks um so yeah lohar is you know if you miss this that's not a big deal he's gonna come back but again it would be nice to start the game with lohar so by starting in a new kingdom you're getting a ton of free stuff plus you have the opportunity to get a a useful epic commander for leveling up your other commanders i know that sounds confusing <clears throat> but there's more uh there's more to it than that not only do you want to start with those free events and with a level playing field if you start in an older kingdom you are going to be the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the barrel people are going to be 40 million power 70 million power 100 million power and you're going to be 3000 power 10,000 power and it's going to take you so long to level up to to even make any sort of meaningful impact in that kingdom that uh it's just going to be so difficult so the only time i would suggest starting your game in an older kingdom is if you already have friends who play this game because this is a community based game this game is way more fun if you enjoy who you're playing with so if you know people who are already playing the game you actually are much more likely to continue playing and having much more fun because you you like the people you play with so the only exception to the rule is if you know people who play then play with them um, and they'll probably be able to, they'll probably be able to help you way more than joining an old kingdom all alone so with that being said let's start to talk a bit more about actual choices and gameplay so the first thing that you're gonna have to choose is your civilization what civilization are you going to pick which one is the best now i can make an entire video on civilizations and why we should pick each one there is no one best civilization obviously right it's a strategy game if you've played other strategy games you would have already anticipated that answer however there are three civilizations that i would suggest for a free to play player or a brand new player those three being either france spain or britain um that's because of uh well france and britain i would pick because of the starting commander um france you start with joan of arc who's a great secondary commander that is still used at the end of the game which is not true for most epics. Also, she's one of the best gatherers, if not the best gatherer in the entire game. Super, super useful. Um, Britain is useful because Boudica is also a very powerful epic commander who is very good for free to play players. She has debuffs. She is very good at slaying barbarians and gaining more experience while doing so. Um, so she's going to be very, very useful. The third uh, one that I talked about and that I mentioned was Spain. And this is the one that I personally picked. And the reason that I picked Spain is because they buff your cavalry. And I think cavalry is the best unit to pick if you're free to play because it's the easiest to do well with. Um, it's also the experience game from barbarians and other neutral un units is increased by 10%. That is super, super useful because you experience is easy to get but it's hard to get a lot of it and so by gaining 10 percent every single time you kill the barbarians or the guardians of a holy site 10 percent is going to stack up to insane levels very very quickly so very useful there cavalry defense boosted by five percent also very useful and finally resource production increased by 20 percent that is mega useful um, if you forget to send out gatherers all the time and especially late game, right? If you're producing 100, uh, you know, wood per hour, then producing 120 wood per hour, really not that useful, right? But later down the line, 20% resource production is, is going to be a lot more. And again, resources in your city don't generate that quickly. So, you know, this is probably the least valuable of the three things that Spain has to offer, but it's worth noting that all three of the perks that Spain offers are good early game, good mid game and good late game. Um, whereas with France and Britain, maybe only one or two of their buffs are useful. Uh, and finally the conquistador, uh, probably not the best special cavalry unit but still a good special cavalry unit whereas throwing axemen and longbowmen are you know they're just whatever um you're probably not going to be focused on archers as a free-to-play player so with that being said those are the three civilizations that i would recommend one of those three 
and it's also again finally worth noting that if you didn't pick one of these three don't worry we're only talking about five percent bonuses three percent bonuses it's not that big of a deal plus later down the line you will be given a free civilization change if i'm not mistaken at a certain city hall level so you can always change this later for free and if you mess that one up then you can change again for 10,000 gems so you are never locked into your civilization you can always change later so if you mess if you mess that up um don't worry about it you can change it later now the next thing i want to talk about is the best commanders because this was a, a question that i got a ton of in my live stream and i'm actually going to switch back to my main account because that's where i have all of the epic commanders um to talk about this specific topic so the biggest topic is what's the best commander well the obvious answer is that there's no single best commander but if i had to pick it would be one of the legendary commanders and you guessed it unless you are a pay to win player you are not going to have a ton of legendary commanders you're going to have very few if any legendary commanders with that being said what are you going to use if you don't have the best options well you're going to be using mostly epic commanders um which you know it's not that bad there are some very good epic commanders and there are some epic commanders that are still used by top tier players in late game so while you may not have access to the best of the best you still have access to a handful of very good very useful commanders so what are the ones that you should focus on right if we just uh, don't look at like legendary commanders just for a second right if we're if we just assume that you're not going to spend thousands of dollars in the game therefore you're probably not going to have a ton of um, powerful legendaries well what commander should you focus on then i would say early game it, especially if your kingdom is at war early game right like if your kingdom is at war and you're only a week into the game i would recommend scipio which is right here he's very tanky because of his first skill and he also gains he, he can bring 10 percent more troops than anybody else which is huge so scipio very tanky very good especially early game late game he gets to be less impressive um, but still very good early game and you'll find use for him i'm sure also great for rallying cities which i don't recommend doing but you know early game he may be your only option second again joan of arc super good she is used by even even players that pay a ton of money they still use joan of arc sometimes because of her first skill especially when expertise plus she's a great gatherer plus she has healing plus she increases normal attack damage by 25 percent, which is huge so yeah joan of arc very good commander very good commander probably almost deserves to be legendary almost with that being said um you passively want to be leveling up so if you have if you have universal sculptures you don't know what to do with them put them in either scipio or joan of arc in my opinion passively you should be gaining sculptures for lohar like i mentioned before because of this third skill which increases experience received by commanders by 70 percent which is freaking huge you're going to be using him a ton for killing barbarians a ton for different barbarian events he's going to be very useful plus his healing factor is 2000 when leading battle which is better than any legendary commander so yeah lohar really insane um terrible for fighting other players but insanely good for fighting pve so that's why i say don't put your universal sculptures into lohar but instead keep him in mind anytime there's a lohar event grind it like crazy um it's a great event overall but really you want to max lohar as fast as possible and also you should be passively getting ethel fled sculptures now she is the exception to the legendary rule she is a legendary that you can max as free to play and guess what she's very good um is she the best no but is she better than than all of the epics she's pro probably probably um she's very good aoe she's very good at debuffing she also gains experience to barbarians um she gains bonus damage so yeah ton of good stuff about ethel fled she is the one legendary that you will be able to max as free to play for sure easy peasy because you're guaranteed three of her sculptures every single day once you start gaining enough credits in the expedition story mode which you will be doing um after a certain amount of time so 
those are the three that you should focus i'm sorry four that you should focus on early game mid game i would say uh if you're free to play focus on pelagius for a primary because he is a very good uh, cavalry commander i still use him to this day uh with a secondary being either by bars who will increase your damage or you could focus on a belisarius primary with pelagius secondary uh, and that will be a very fast combination meaning you'll move around the map very quickly you'll be very hard to kill and also great for killing enemy farmers who aren't paying attention in this mid game group i also put sun tzu he is a very good garrison commander insanely good aoe especially for an epic so he's going to be very universal very powerful and that's good news if you picked uh china because again sun tzu great skill damage great aoe very good for your garrison um just a very good all-around uh commander and very good for pairing with ethel fled later which is very very good even players who've spent a lot of money in this game and who are very powerful use that combination uh, occasionally and finally if you are a a, a free-to-play or low pay-to-play player in the late game i would suggest also um investing in kusanoki first um before investing then in herman or maybe vice versa it, it's hard to say these are both archer um commanders kusunoki is good for he's got a decent aoe but also he removes negative control effects which is great he's also a garrison commander he also uh has a chance to do additional damage tons of things to love about kusunoki and also herman silences your enemy for two seconds meaning they can't do skill damage to you plus has a 10 percent chance of generating a ton of rage which means he can be used in, as a rage generating engine for other powerful skill damage commanders so late game those two i would recommend but only after you've pretty much maxed all of the other ones that we talked about in that list the next thing i want to talk about is focus on gathering resources early and often and also focus on leveling up and powering up or, i'm sorry skilling up your gathering commanders now the gathering commanders in this game with the exception of cleopatra and sun duck i probably pronounced that terribly and the latest commander in the game ishida um with the exception of those three legendaries all of your uh gathering commanders are going to be very easy to get which is very good news because gathering is super underrated in this game gathering is one of the most important things um when it comes to gaining enough resources to go to war gaining enough resources to level up buildings and do research you should always be gathering all the time unless you're at war maybe in which case you still should probably gather during downtime um but the gathering commanders in this game are going to be constance gaius marius centurion uh sarka and i think that is it um again besides cleopatra oh and of course joan of arc you can't forget joan of arc but again gather often gather all the time and when you level up these commanders any blue sculptures that are universal I would put into Constance at star two. So get her to star two and then put all of your universal blues into her until the second one, until this second skill is five, and then bring her all the way up to four stars and get this skill up to five. Once those two are at, f at max, then I would start putting your universal blues into uh sarka which is down here because she is a very great universal gatherer again get her to second star max this and then get her to uh well, then after that it doesn't really matter third you want to get gaius marius put all your your blues into him again get him to second star i'm sure you're guessing you're seeing the trend here max out this second skill then take him to third star uh that's probably most important more important than fourth and then you know take him all the way um finally <clears throat> your fourth blue should be lancelot you're only ever going to use him for traveling around the map because of the second skill so again get him to star two max the second skill and then take him the rest of the way and finally any extras can go into tamo she's your last option i don't know if she's that great she is a pretty good secondary commander early game but besides that you have tons of um other things to be focusing on i wouldn't really worry about tomo too much you probably won't use her too much and finally for greens there's only four green commanders they're terrible 
The only one that you're going to regularly use is Centurion, and his only uh, his only skill that is useful really is this third one for troop gathering. And so with him, you want to get him to three stars, max this skill, get him to fourth stars, finish him off. After that, the rest of your Universal Greens should go into Dragon Lancer's uh, second skill. So get him to star two, get this to max, and then take him the rest of the way. You can see, even me, I haven't even gotten him to to far stars, four stars, because he's useless after that. So the only reason that I even talked about Dragon Lancer is because he gets 10 percent cavalry march speed bonus, which is even better than Lancelot actually, because he only gets five. So a Lancelot uh, Dragon Lancer combo with all tier one cavalry um, will move around the map very quickly so that will be useful for like gathering runes and stuff like that but very very unimportant you have other things to focus on now the last thing i want to talk about when it comes to commanders and and pay attention if you, if you stop paying attention a while ago this is where you come back and start paying attention the most important skill for pretty much every commander is their first skill again for uh, okay let me rephrase that for legendary and epic commanders their first skill is probably their most powerful there's very few exceptions to this rule we just talked about all the blues and greens so don't worry about them their second skill is usually the best maybe their third but for for all of the best commanders for the legendaries and epics their first skill is the most powerful what does this mean before you take these commanders to star two which means don't take them past level 10 max that first skill first because otherwise you're going to be wasting sculptures later down the line and you don't want to waste sculptures especially especially if it's a legendary commander so please level up that first skill first to five for pretty much any commander now later down the line maybe i'll make a video about best commanders best skills commander guides things like that some of these videos already exist from other creators you can go watch them if you want a better idea for a specific commander but as a general rule first skill is best for epic and legendary commanders so bullet point number eight is you know you're probably wondering which buildings do i upgrade when well it's very simple get your city hall to 25 as fast as possible and the reason for this is because there are no downsides to doing this that you're not missing out on certain things you're not missing out on being useful for the most part uh really the the you're going to be most useful at city hall 25 so get there as quickly as you possibly can there's going to be certain requirements along the way you can't just continue to upgrade your city hall you have to upgrade other things along the way and the game will tell you which ones those are while this is upgrading you know if it takes a couple of days just keep in mind that every single city hall will require that you upgrade a quarry to the to the highest level which then will allow you to upgrade your tavern to the highest level and your tavern being the highest level will allow you to upgrade your wall to the highest level and that is one of the requirements of upgrading your city hall if you look here that's all i'm missing from city hall level nine in order to, to level this up i have to upgrade my tavern and in order to do that which i am doing i needed my quarry so if you're upgrading your city hall then i would recommend um doing some of the other buildings other than them because they're going to be max they're going to be as high as they can go while you're waiting so do some of the other things like uh your um your training your barracks and things like that your different training buildings um your first building upon finishing your city hall should actually be your alliance center and the reason for that is because that will increase the number of times you can be helped and every time you're helped by an alliance member your your the amount of time it takes to do a building or a research or a heal will go down by i think either one percent or one minute whichever is higher so that will that that will actually compound the sooner you do it so essentially level up your city hall as fast as possible once it's done level up your alliance center as fast as possible to the highest level uh, and once that's done, tr start to do the requirements for the next city hall and do that all the way up to city hall level 25. And then from there, uh, you're going to want to pretty much do everything else. The ninth bullet point is to always use runes and titles whenever you are doing something meaningful in the game. Uh, you can ask for titles in the kingdom chat and your uh, one of the um, 
one of the higher ranking officials in the kingdom will be glad to give you scientist or architect or duke for training troops or for you know building and things like that or even research is very important so always use a title when you can do when you can for a meaningful upgrade and always use a rune that is relevant to those upgrades and sometimes if you know if a particular research is going to take 96 days it may be worth doing other researches until you get either a kingdom buff or a 15 percent rune or both for those specific events that way you can maximize the amount of time it takes to decrease that research time all right point number 10 is very simple you should never let your troops die this is crucial because it takes way longer to train troops and requires way more resources to train new troops than it does to heal troops that you've already trained that have simply gone to the hospital so what does this mean don't just attack enemy cities for no reason i see new players doing this all the time they see they scout an enemy city they see it's got tons of resources and then they just hit it like a brick wall and a ton of their troops die and they think that they made out like kings when in reality they took a huge loss in all those troops because even if you made more resources than it takes to train them you now have to spend time to train them again so don't let your troops die the only time and this you know is a kind of a sub point the only time that you should use universal speed ups to heal your troops is to prevent your troops from dying or if you are in the end game right if you completely maxed out all your buildings all your tech all your everything and you are at war then go ahead use those universals to heal your troops but until then don't let your troops die for no reason just don't let it happen. Don't go past your hospital capacity. Uh, don't attack cities for no reason. Uh, don't defend flags if there's no point in defending the flag. Just don't let your troops die because it's going to be a huge detriment to your progress. Tip number 11 is very simple. Uh, keep your resource items in your inventory until you need them. Because as soon as I use this 1000 food, it gets added to my food up in the top right corner. And now it can suddenly be plundered if I go over my storehouse capacity. So by leaving them in item form, then there's no downside. These can't be stolen from you, but you can use them instantaneously. It costs you nothing. So keep them here. That way they don't get stolen. There's nothing more heartbreaking than using all of your items and then waking up to finding your city burning and there's none of it left. So keep it here. Keep it here. Don't use it. Don't use these chests. Don't use anything until... You're about to do an upgrade and then it'll tell you how much you need and then you can press the button for these and yeah uh side note also um some players like to keep these for emergencies like for when you're at war and you have to heal troops because healing t4s and t5s requires a ton of resources so that's another option you could do personally for me i'm a little bit more impatient than that and i do end up using those item packs for mega big upgrades um but yeah don't use them until you need them because they'll get taken my 12th tip is to avoid getting into fights early game just avoid it just don't fight other players if you can help it because it's just not gonna help anybody it's it's to everyone's benefit to be at peace you will level up quicker you will get stronger faster you will help each other achieve more by not killing each other so if your entire alliance is is at war um you might want to find another alliance early game because they're probably not going to be the strongest unless they're spending a lot of money so if you're a free-to-play player avoid unnecessary battles it's just pointless you're just gonna lose troops you're gonna get may have major setbacks and you're gonna spend all your resources healing so yeah that kind of goes uh, hand in hand with not letting troops die but you know just don't end up in situations where they could die to begin with because there's other perks like saving your resources the 13th tip that i want to give you guys is join an active alliance and also be active yourself this is super underrated by new players and is very well understood by veteran players being in an active alliance is a game changer for more than one reason one you will get the helps that you need on your important upgrades and on your heals faster which is which means you're going to be ready to fight faster you're going to level up faster you're going to get powerful faster all that's important the second one is you're going to have more people contributing to your alliance technology and so when your alliance technology speaking of which i have to donate um when this alliance technology is all 
is all full your troops are going to be stronger you're going to be gathering faster you're going to be doing more damage you're going to be traveling around the map faster pretty much every, there's all sorts of amazing alliance skills that you can get and they're only going to be unlocked if you have a ton of people working towards the same goal and that is really only something that you see in active alliances and finally the gifts that you get from an active alliance are super super useful so anytime your alliance members spend money on different packs in the game you're going to get a chest for free you will get a free speed up free gems free stuff just because people are spending money you don't have to spend anything if everybody else is spending so if you're in a really popular a really popular active alliance and there are whales in the alliance that are spending hundred dollar a hundred dollars a day three hundred dollars a day sometimes you're gonna benefit from that just by sitting there collecting all the stuff that they're spending their money on so yeah super super useful plus as you can see here i got sculptures of lohar for no reason i just <clears throat> my my alliance members fought lohar and i got a sculpture for it amazing so yeah that plus even if no one's spending money if you're all rallying forts and rallying lohars and and doing all that stuff this is going to fill up quickly as well which also gives you free stuff and eventually you're going to level up this treasure of crystal to the blue tier and uh that is going to be super useful for you you're going to get some uh extra arrows of a resistance you're going to get some books of covenant for that you're going to get some resources and stuff so very useful to be in an active alliance for multiple reasons and all those reasons that i just listed are very very crucial to getting powerful fast and the final tip that i want to give you guys is diplomacy what do i mean by this i mean try not to wage war try not to do things that are like gonna land your alliance in war try not to talk trash in the kingdom chat chat try not to troll people all the time try to be a genuinely good member of your alliance and genuinely good member of your kingdom if you are well loved and well respected then people are going to like you and you're going to find yourself in less situations where your hospital is full so build relationships with with people and just stay out of trouble and this will be uh you know kind of in a, a a golden rule right you will just find your time in rise of kingdoms a lot easier if you have a lot of allies on your side or you just have less people wanting to attack you you know if your alliance gets burned down but people are like oh you know maybe i won't attack omniar because he's always in kingdom chat and he he's really nice and you know i know him and whatever that's huge right um you'll have options to move to different alliances when you know you can move from one alliance to maybe an even stronger one to an even stronger one right so diplomacy is huge avoid war if you can uh because it'll help you level up faster and make sure to follow the tips in this video now if you enjoyed this video and now you have even more questions and you want me to make a specific video on a specific aspect of rise of kingdoms then do a couple of things one subscribe for more videos like this one comment down below telling me what you need help with in rise of kingdoms and also follow me on twitch link in the description below because i may be i may be streaming this game a bit more over the coming weeks so you can pop in there and ask me anything while i'm live and you'll only know if i'm live if you get those notifications from following with that being said guys if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful make sure you drop a thumbs up and i really really appreciate all of the support for this video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni archive we'll talk to you guys again soon peace